Hi everybody, it's Jane from Living Skies Vintage. Well, I'm back today. I've been working on my Asian art journal and I just thought I'd kind of catch you up and let you see what I've been doing and also show you how I've done it. So let's get started. So here we are. Now this front page I've taken past, taken a couple of steps. Um, I've put some colors down, uh, my basic watercolor backgrounds. I've put in some, some stamps with, uh, some acrylic paint. I've also used some alcohol markers on here to make some of these marks. And these are a couple of images that I found that I decided that I want on that page and they are now attached. So this is kind of where we're going with these, but, uh, I, what I've been doing is concentrating mostly on getting the some of the background colors down here before I get into um, some of the acrylic stamping and uh, the alcohol markers like this. So this, what I've been using is um, Derwent Inktense pencils. That's, that's these babies. And uh, what, you, what they do is they actually react with water. Um, they're water soluble. Once they've had their reaction, they should, not, um, they should not react again as long as I've gotten them all in water and moved around. So like this particular one, I can tell there's no, there's no ink that's there that's not been wetted down this and this and this are going to stay there if i put something wet on top of them they're not going to move and you can see i've tried to use some of the colors that were in the in the napkins that i had put down just to bring some cohesiveness to the page again same type of same type of thing where i've used the ink ink tents and brought some of the colors from the napkins into both pages and just trying to get some kind of balance now this this is going to be something that i will work on with you later but my plan for this is i want to be able to cut this out or put this in so that it's going to when the when the i need to fold it correctly but when this is closed it's going to close like this and then as you open it the face itself will come with the page and open like that and kind of be a little a little tinted that way so I've got to cut another fold to put in that for now but it's that's I've decided that's what I want to do with this and then you saw this I had uh, thought I'm going to put some uh, uh, anime characters in this area still going to do that but I added some, a little more color to kind of intens intensify the blue and on this side of the page I am going to put a little bit of a tab and I've already cut the door but there's going to be a door on this side and I'm going to have some images here and then <clears throat> coming into here what I did with this one and you can see it through the door is I have actually cut a hole in this I used that uh, just my exacto knife to cut this out. Now this talk about things that turn out to be serendipitous. Things that happen, happy little moments, happy little mistakes. I forget how Bob Ross used to put it, but um, essentially this, by me cutting this out, I had already painted, painted this with or painted or put my ink tents colors on this and this kind of reminds me i don't know if uh, you're familiar with japanese woodworking but there's one called i think it's called the wave it's very i'm sure if you've seen it you'll you'd recognize it it's quite a large blue wave that kind of goes like this and this kind of reminded me of these colors kind of reminded me of that and just the way all of these spots were going on but I'm looking at this, and this kind of thinks, makes me think of teeth and maybe a big mouth. So this might end up being a sea monster or something inside this wave. We'll see how that goes, but 
that's that's how I work. I get little ideas as I move through and get different things done. This one I've colored again, taking taking hints from the papers and the and the uh, and the napkins that I've put in. I haven't trimmed the all of the edges yet. This one I decided to do a little darker. This one here, I haven't put any of my uh, Intense pen pencils on it yet and added watercolor. But what I have done, and maybe you can kind of see the sheen as I'm moving the pages, is that this is uh, acrylic gold paint. And all I've done with, with that is taken a, 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 a credit card or a business card and I've just taken the paint and scraped it across like this to give it to give it just a little texture. Now we're getting to some of the pages that I haven't worked on yet. So you can see there's quite a difference once you put that on compared to something like that. So there's lots of ideas that I got and still lots of pages for me to work on. It does take me a little while because uh, each one of these, oh, there's a couple of pages I'm going to put in there. Each one of these, I have to kind of wait for it to dry before I go on to the next one. Once I start using more of the acrylic paints, these actually dry a lot faster than the, than the ink tint water activated paints because a lot of times I'm trying to get the water to do drips in that. So let's take a look. I'll do a little bit actually on this page. I wanted to add some color to this gold page and I'll show you how I work with my ink tints pencils. Now this page I hadn't quite decided but I thought I'd do some uh, some golds in there. Um, maybe get some into the hot reds and cherry colors. So let me just pull a few pencils out of here and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So let's get, yeah, that's a nice one. So I've got, I've actually got four colors here right now. I've got the ink tints cherry, the poppy red, the chili red, and the Shiraz. Shiraz is actually quite dark, almost a brown color. So essentially, I just make a mess, frankly, people. Um, I don't, I, I try and pick little corners and accent, like I'm thinking, okay, this is the bottom of something, and I just want to put in a little darkness maybe in this area. And you can see the Shiraz is very similar to this color in the in the in this paper, so that's why I picked it. I'll pull it in here, and where you actually put the pencil becomes more intense with color, and the different papers on this page are going to react differently to this to these colors too. So let's just throw some more color down. Uh, we'll get here now. I've got some chili red. I'm just going to put that one up there. Yeah, that one looks good with that color. Just kind of take some cues from what I already have down here. I'm trying to. There's some chili red in there. And the edges of the paper are always where you're going to have the most drama. Um, and you'll find with the matte, the gel matte medium, I should say, sorry people, um, now I'm into the cherry red, um, you'll see that uh, you'll get some textures too in here with the, with the different. Now I don't need to color all of it. I should put some of this color though on this page. What you do on one page you should always make sure you do some on the other just to kind of keep your continuity. And then I'm going to bring in the poppy red which is almost almost an orange red compared to these. And that'll be kind of more of a 
twilight color up here. Kind of at the top of a thing. Now you see that's a little piece of, that's a little piece of ink. Like if that wasn't fully dissolved, that would reintegrate into my paper. So I'll just pull it off for now. Now you see, I'm just kind of putting the colors down and it, that's a long red, there's some gold, but I think what I also want to do is grab some really bright, bright yellow to put in this too. So I think what I'm looking for, yeah, here's a sun yellow, sun yellow. And that mixing in with these reds will give me some real fiery colors, I think. So let's see how we're going to do with these and with the gold too. It'll bring that gold out some more. Okay, so I use um, a water brush, which is, this is water is in the end of it. It's got a little bit of dye on it right now. See, I've been using it and I didn't clean it. I was using it on that green page. I'm just going to squeeze out some of the water so that I don't get green in my red. That's good. Okay. And it also doesn't hurt to just have a little spray bottle that you can kind of wet the page down and start these colors moving a bit. Otherwise, I would put a lot of water on from the brush on here to get moving. Now, I'm going to try in the yellow areas more first because you'll see you'll pick up color from you know your other colors that you've put down parchment paper down. I just keep these sheets. I'm going to use them as I need them in between. And then you can see this is kind of, this is being fun here. Take some of that red out. You can see I've got this, oh, that yellow bit here first. I want to get rid of it, not rid of. Let's see if I can smoosh that a little bit first. Okay, now, now, let's start just moving some of the color a little more. And, and as I'm painting, I'm actually pushing out a little bit of water out of these two just to make sure that things mix. You don't have to cover all of it, but I do like color because you got to remember a lot of this too is will get actually covered up with other uh, images that I've got pulled out and the other thing that I've learned is that everything looks really bad before it looks really good so like if you liked what you'd seen before they all kind of started out just like a big mess like this you know nothing nothing terribly special Just, you know, moving the paint around, the ink, the colored ink, 
got that yellow spot. But you can see how. And and here, if you know a little bit of color theory about you know your what colors make what, it does help. It does help. Um, for those of you who may not have that knowledge uh, red and yellow make orange yellow and uh, blue make green and blue and red make purple so your three primary colors are blue red and yellow and from that those three colors every other color is made and then you add blacks and whites to change your tint and shade. I'm just trying to make sure all of the penciled areas get a little water on them. Because like I said, if I don't make sure that it's been... That. If I don't make sure that it's been dissolved, that's the word I'm searching for, it's uh, going to come back at me. So some of these areas are really dark and this is how I make some of those kind of dotted areas. I always, I don't know, I think they remind me of peonies or chrysanthemums in the background once they're done. And they're just so simple to make. And you can, I can just take some of the ink from What I've got going and just you know bounce it in the clearer places with dots a little more water in the tip and I'll oop didn't want to make quite that one but that's okay it needed some more color in that spot and this is what I mean when I say I need to leave these for a while to let them dry because you can see it's quite wet. If I closed it, I could put, you know, this parchment paper in between, but um, most of the color would come off of that. And that's not what I want. I want the color to stay on the page and into the paper. Sorry, it's getting a little quiet there. Um, yeah, I want the water to dry on the paper and create those little magical spots that where some are darker and some are lighter. And you get almost a watercolor effect. So there we go with that. And I'll come back after this is dried up a little bit more and we'll talk about putting some uh, maybe some see when we're just gonna do this you can make all that color move so with the water like what's happening down this side just dripping down the edge there it goes these will all leave little little tracks
I'm going to stop this for now and I'll come back and uh, we'll look at adding some some other marks and uh, acrylic paint to some of the other ones that I've already worked on. We'll let this one dry completely. I can I just need for the surface to dry before I work on any of the other pages um, and that'll take a little bit. The actual pages themselves stay quite damp actually for a bit so I won't want to be uh, trying to glue anything on it for a little while. So here we go. I'll just pause it here and we'll be back in a little bit. So here we go. I've gotten uh, some paint colors and a few stencils out. So the first thing I want to do is use some acrylic paint on stencils with this. I've got some gold and I picked up these three, four colors of paint to go on here. You can see I'm kind of following the color scheme that's already here and I've got a number of stencils that I may or may not use but I'm thinking I want to use this one. This particular one reminds me of cherry blossoms. I'm just trying to decide which way I want it. I think I want it like this. Yes. And over here and I want to use, you can see I don't really wash my stencils. I want to use some light pink. This is all dry. This is old old acrylic paint. I use uh, takeout, takeout trays, coffee lids, ice cream pail lids, anything that I can. Um, I don't I don't need to buy particular fancy palettes and things like that. This will do. So I got a little bit of pink there. I should have shook that up a bit, but I want it to be a little more transparent. And we'll put some of this dark one there. I want to pick that up a bit. I'm going to put a little bit of some olive color in this corner. Just keep it separate from those pinks. And there was a little bit of light blue in the butterfly and a couple of flowers and I think that that would make a nice accent. So you can see the see the palette that I'm creating there. And We'll leave the gold for a little bit. We're going to keep with these. These are, uh, I think these I got from Michael's actually. They came in a box of 36 colors and they're lasting me a long time. And hey, they're great for what I want to do. So I don't need, I don't need fancy, fancy, dancy pinks. So what I wanted to do with this is kind of create what I think is cherries. Kind of see if I can get some of this color in there. I don't want to do it all over because I'm going to try something. I'm going to try and put maybe a little bit of blue behind the flowers themselves. If I can even highlight the pink a little bit. See, it's not completely opaque. I don't know if you can tell, but I can see some of the the writing behind it still. I want to I want to keep that layer fairly light and watery. But not too watery that it doesn't stencil correctly. That's the only thing. You gotta find that happy medium. Sorry if my hand is in the way. But here's all my 
not gonna worry about it too much if I go outside the lines. I'm just gonna wanna make sure I'm covering what I want to cover. Well, that one kind of went where I want to put some blue later, but let's do this. This. Um, that one is a little too watery. Right here. Okay. So I've got that going. Oh, I want to just take a tiny bit of this. I'm going to be in the center of each of these, or what you would think would be the center of each of these. Just have create a little bit of a different shade of pink in towards there. And that'll kind of echo some of those dot flowers, like this, that I was talking about earlier. You know, you get the different shades of ink in there. I like that, I like how that's coming. Let me just this brush off a little bit because I want to now bring in a little bit of this baby baby blue just a touch and again really more of a transparent color because I want, I want it to show through a bit Had a smaller brush this might be a little easier but I'm going with what I got right at the moment so yeah this page I wanted to kind of create a more of a feminine kind of dreamy quality it's the way it had started out can see I think this is certainly feminine Okay, I like that. This I think should be blue. I had to look at that for a second and decide if that was a petal or if it was a tree branch. And I think that this should be a piece of sky. There we go. Yes, I like that. I like that. Okay, well, here comes. Some, sorry, bang bang on my glass there. Here comes what I would call a little bit of excitement because now I'm going to lift this off. Oh, let's just leave it down there for a little while longer. You can see it's really pale under there. I'm going to just, just take a 
maybe I think what I'm gonna do is create an outer Watery acrylic dries pretty fast. So, I'm not too afraid of moving this around a little bit. is picking up some colors underneath it's showing sure transparent that's what I want it to do okay I'm gonna take this off now it's good it could be hard Ooh. So when I go back over this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline this, I think, in a in a white. You can see the dark pink is caught underneath here to outline some of those flowers. And then you can see some of the, the newsprint coming through on the back there. So I'm not afraid of this. Like I say, things have to look ugly before they look better. So also, so I've got some circles there. I think I need to get some more kind of bubbles maybe around and this is always fun and actually what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take some of this acrylic green paint just let me get, put my brush away this green paint right here and I'm going to take a business card that I have. I'm just going to take some of that. And I want to this these actually work a lot better. Oh, here we are. size credit cards are the best but look at how those cards are really great for doing this and they come in the mail which will save some of your mail and you can use it as a paint spreader now I did that all delicate. I'm going to bring some other color in here while oh, that's drying just a little bit. I like how that does that. Just keep dipping the card in. Some blue on this side of the page because we've got all this blue over here. You need some blue over here. Bring some of this hot pink a little more in this. Here. Just kind of 
if you know, see, just trying to keep the colors flowing. Blue, green, maybe get a little bit of light pink on this side. And look, see how the colors layer on top of each other when you do this? Like, I like this. You get different effects um, with the light color, of course, going over a darker color. You're going to see it more. And I want more pink on there. Some here. Now, I still have paint in here. I'm not sure that I'm going to put much more paint on this page. Maybe just a little bit. Like that. Like how the pink and the blue mixed in there. This off my card. I think I'm going to stop there with this one. I want this to dry so I can start doodling on it a little bit more. And this has still got some wet paint on it, so I don't want to be putting any of my markers on it because put your markers in wet acrylic paint, you are killing your markers. So I'm just going to move this off to the side for one second. And then I'm going to show you a couple of things. So, like I said, I still have wet paint in here, and I decided that I was done. Well, this is a little magazine journal that uh, I started some time ago. It's got paint in it already. Um, I think if you go back and look at some of my old videos, you'll see a flip through of this. But the good thing about having a little book like this is you can take your leftover paint and just do what you want with it. So. Huh. That and you can see I pasted pictures in here. I doodled in here. Just gonna pull that apart. Look at that. Look at that. So don't waste your paint. This one's a little watery right now. Don't waste your paint. Should I look at her? Didn't want to put it down on my desk all wet. And uh, just do it. Parchment paper in between your pages will stop the proof chicken or help stop the proof chicken. And it makes A good palette too at times. I just fold these things back in on each other to help myself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
hanging off of there. Easy. Don't waste it. Just, I'm not doing anything in particular except just putting the color on the paper. Maybe trying not to mix the red and the green together to make a, a whole bunch of brown. But, uh, or the pink and the green, I guess, I should say. But, uh. Mm -hmm. Lots of different things that you can do. Haven't even got any paint on it, so let's see what we can do with this one. And it's got the blue and the pink. So, there we go, just, just playing around with the paint, not doing anything in particular, just trying to get some, rid of some of this paint on here. So, um, thank for you everybody. That's one thing you can do with your extra paint. Oops, sorry, I forgot I had paint on the back of that. But the other thing that I like to do, and it certainly helps me when to get organized, love my painting fingers. I don't mind painting fingers. Is this project, and you can see it's still got some wet on it. But what I do is I have sorts of different things that I may or may not use in this in this particular uh, composition uh, so when I want to work on it you can see these are all the little things that I showed you before um, so when I want to work on it I just need to pull out the book and pull out this box and then I can go ahead and work on that project Working on different projects can be very confusing. So, thank you all for joining me. I won't be catching up with you on this on my art journal for a little while. I'm going to be away for a bit, but I hope you enjoy what you've seen so far, and I hope that it encourages you to maybe start a little project of your own. Oops! <laughs> Anyways, start a little project of your own. Just be creative, have fun. That's what it's all about. I started doing this because I wanted to disconnect from the TV and my phone and all the other stuff that goes on on the net. I started creating things.
Gr granted, I'm on the net now showing you, but there's a lot of nice people doing this out there, and I hope you come and join me. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please follow some of them, and uh, let's be happy and get creating. See you around soon. Bye.